Daydreaming about dragons. This is Judd. Let's get to it. Uh, last night's Stars Without Number had a bunch of moments that I think are, are worth noting. Uh, there was technical, there was technique stuff going on, so technical stuff going on, and I just want to talk about it. So first thing was, I'm not going to get into like how they got there, but they're in a mansion built into a cliff. They know that under the cliff, there are very likely alien ancient artifacts. Uh, they're, and so they're, they're doing some exploring. Cool. Let's back up a second. Uh, there are a couple of people in the group and two of the, two, let's say there are three regulars and two of them are really soldiers. Uh, one is kind of a, a, a cannibal hunter and the other is a, uh, is a soldier, uh, just like a kind of an awesome grunt. I'm thinking Hicks from uh, from Aliens. That's that's a that's a vibe I'm getting from this. I think I think Aaron would agree with me. And the and then a third player is a scientist who who really gets into his thing and and doesn't stop and is a little obsessive. Cool. So. The game starts, and I've only got the two grunts. I've got the hunter, the Gujardim hunter, and I've got the, the soldier kid from Caprianu. And the scientist isn't there. But what they have to do is they have to, like, with, with what, what is left to do in this adventure, really, is to, you know, go around in the tunnels and, and find this alien artifact. And we knew that the scientist character would be joining us later because he had to put his kids to bed. So... It was kind of fun to have the unskilled characters there doing the stuff. Uh, it was neat. It, was, it kind of worked. And it was cool because what they found was an alien computer and the way that it interfaced with humans, because it really didn't know how to do it because we're so alien from the, from the people who made it or the, the creatures that made it, the sentience that made it. It, it, it links up to our emotions. So I was like, how am I going to do that in game? You know, like I really didn't know what I was, how I was going to do it. And here's how I did it. Uh, I described the, the, they, they used a, a breaching charge that you normally use to breach a ship. And they used it to blow a hole in a tunnel and, and find their way into this alien computer. And it looked like a kind of bioluminescent tree with like techno organic stuff all over it. And, I asked them what it invoked in their characters, what it reminded their characters of, what what part of their past did it like bring up? You know, did it bring up any kind of emotions to, to see this thing? And my buddy Aaron talked about how there were there were symbols like this back in his home world, and it kind of reminded him of home, and it kind of made him a little homesick. And then my 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 buddy Wit talked about how it reminded his Gujar Dream Hunter of hunting back at home, and how there weren't trees like this in the undergrowth where he used to have to hunt. And the computer processed this, and I had them make rolls, and it didn't process cleanly. They they didn't they didn't communicate with the computer well. So, but I but that's not really what's important. What's important is is I kind of mixed it up. I had a, a bit of a, a die roll to see if they connected with the computer correctly. And then I, I asked some questions, right? Just ask blunt questions about, about the characters. Hey, what, what does this invoke? Does this remind you of anything? And that is how I got the emotional response. Uh, and, and it was cool because they could see what I was doing, but their characters didn't know what was going on. And they, they really role-played the hell out of it. And then the scientist character, my buddy Jay, put his kids to bed and came to join the game and kind of figured out what was going on and, and stopped things from, from turning into a real disaster. And it was really cool. It was fun. Um, and I liked that, you, that use of questions and the way the players reacted to it was so cool that I felt like I, I, had, to, I had to say something. I had to talk about it with you all. And another thing happened in that game. Uh, I, I mentioned this a while ago. We haven't played in a bit. So I might have mentioned uh, the, the Psychic Tigers. And that was just like an off-the-cuff thing I said. I had one of the villagers say, yeah, if you go into the jungles, be careful of the Psychic Tigers. And 
that those two words just hit. The players just flipped. The, the, what psychic tigers? And it's a terrifying idea. Uh, like I and, and I, I had tigers with psychic powers in the game, uh, and and if, as if tigers weren't terrifying enough, uh, they were black tigers with with blue stripes, neon blue stripes, and yeah, there there was one with telekinesis. And one with uh, one who could read minds, and there was one that was kind of learning how to teleport. It was a lot of fun, and and look for those phrases. And when they hit, you know, I, I just love when those kind of things hit, and I get to use them, and they become a, a part of the world. Uh, I had not planned that. There's a lot of pre-planning in Stars Without Number. There's a lot of setting that goes into it. Uh, so I, I had stuff, you know. It was definitely the, the blue jungles of 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 Venezuela that of, of the planet Venezuela that that did it, uh, that got me there. But you know, two simple words: psychic tigers. We are off to the races. Characters were both fascinated, like you know, some characters were just terrified. Uh, Wits Hunter character definitely wanted to hunt himself a, a psychic tiger. And I made that happen, and he did successfully. It was cool. It was really, really cool. It was a fun game. And, yeah, I don't know. It's just little little things that get you there, right? Uh, asking for smart die rolls, interpreting those die rolls, you know, not having a, a failed role to interact with this computer being, oh, well, it shuts down your brain and you die, right? But have it being that it is, you know, it starts to tweak on your emotions and things start to go weird um, and it was cool it was a it was a fun game and, and asking characters what you know if this reminds them of anything or what does this remind you of is a really really fun thing that I need to remember to do more especially in really crazy you know What's that line that Gary Oldman's character says in, uh, in, in The Professional, uh, Leon? Uh, I love those quiet little moments before the storm. When you find those quiet little moments before the storm, definitely ask your players questions. You know, what's your character thinking right now? You know, as you, as you, as you climb your, on the rope down to the dungeon that you know is demon haunted, what are you thinking about? Uh, I love that. I, I asked my friend Jay that question uh, during a Blades in the Dark game. He was he was climbing up the metal rungs of a ladder to go wreak havoc and kill a bunch of people. And I said, what are you thinking as you climb up, knowing that on the deck of this ship are, are a bunch of blue coats who are going to try to beat you to death? And he said, I was thinking, just another day at the office for me. And it, it so defined that character, you know? And, and they might be as surprised by their answer as you are because they might not have thought of that. So ask those good questions. Ask them. I'll have some links to questions. Uh, I wrote up some questions that were things I would ask if people were playing, uh, you know, like a D&D type game, like based on their, their class. Um, and then another person made a new, a new blog post about other questions. So I'll put links to both of those. They're really good. And they might get you started and let me know how, let me know what's going on at your table. Drop me a line. I'd love to hear it. You know, what technique has worked for you lately? What, what moment did you help bring about by doing something that a savvy gamer does? What'd you do? Because this is, this is a skill-based hobby. What we do is, you know, it's not difficult. It's not impossible. You don't have to be Matthew Colville or Matt Mercer or any, you know, voice actor or any or an improv champion to do this. But it is skill based, and talking about the skills and the techniques that get us there help get others there because then they can see the tools in their toolbox. And it's easier to pull tools out of your toolbox when you know their names. So let me know. Hit me up with a tool in your toolbox. As a player, as a GM, I don't care. As long as it made the game a more fun place, I'd love to hear about it. Cool. Inspiration goat time. Let's do this. All right. It's an adventure. And it's an adventure I just bought, just read over. And 
you can get it at the DMs Guild for five bucks. It's a short adventure for first to fourth level characters. And here's it's by uh, Daniel H. Kwan and Angus McPherson, editing by Daniel Kwan and Patrick Keenan, map illustrated by Daniel Kwan, typesetting by Will Parks. Okay. It is a tomb adventure. It is dead simple. It's dead easy. I like it. It has the the bell and whistle on it, I think, is that it has some cool decisions for the players once they kind of figure out the mystery of the of the tomb. It's not a gotcha adventure. It's not a ooh, I, I thought you thought I was gonna go zig and I zagged. Oh my goodness, now whatever. It's not that kind of thing. It's not a gotcha thing. It is a basic tomb raid with, I think, some cool decisions that could affect the entire world based on what the players do. The players basically have to make a stand on a political situation that will affect the entire kingdom they're in. And that, especially for first to fourth level, you know, just starting, it's really fun. It is really fun. Uh... It takes a lot of influence from the Three Kingdoms period of Chinese history. It talks a bit about Orientalism and exotification uh, of Asian cultures and thoughts on staying away from that, just some short ones. Uh, I will put some links to James Mendez and uh, an article he wrote about, about that, about that topic. It's fun. Uh, as I said, five bucks on DMs Guild and... and I like having fast, easy, cool, basic, but fun adventures in my repertoire that I can just take out on the table when someone, when you know, folks are around. And they're like, "Hey, I'd like to play something," and we can just go. And that that's a lot of fun. Uh, I I I gotta say that is something I like about adventures. So, because it's. It's, it, it's almost formulaic, which I like. It's got a trap. It's got some tomb guardians. Uh, it's got some ancient history behind it. But what I like in a module is for the players to have to make a decision. Um, bec- and, and that's really cool. That's really cool. Once they figure out what's going on, okay, now what do you do? You know, which is one of the problems I have with mysteries is it's not so it, for me it's not as interesting just figuring out what's going on it's more interesting for me what the players do once they figure out what's going on right if they know that the king's chamberlain is corrupt and they just know that right away they find it out it's more interesting to me what they do with that knowing that the king's chamberlain could make their lives really easy could give them a lot of gold well, if you pin it on the captain of the guard, you know, I could, I could fund your next adventure. That's interesting. Um, you know, if they pin it on the chamberlain and just go all in, then they've got a new enemy on their hands. Also interesting. So it's not quite that involved, I think, this one. This one but, but I think it, 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 it gives the players an interesting decision to make at the end. Uh, they're going to take a stand on one side or the other uh, in a... In a you know something that's going to really shape your fantasy realm for a good long time. So check it out, and let me know what you think. And I will see you next time. Hey, and I never said this, or I said it in an old draft, and it got edited out. But this module was written by Daniel Kwan, who also is one of the uh, amazing minds behind Asians Represent, which is a really cool podcast that you should totally check out. So I, I picked this module because I think Daniel's awesome, and I think his podcast is awesome, and I thought this adventure was awesome, and I think he's someone to watch out for. So great work, Daniel, and great work, team, on Wolf of the South, and I'm looking forward to reading more from all of you, and uh, I'm sorry that this wasn't in the original, but I'm going to jam it in right now. Here it goes. If you would like to support Daydreaming About Dragons and help me create more of this stuff, there is a support this podcast button on the Anchor app. 
I appreciate that. If you would like to support it another way, you can also purchase my book, The Dictionary of Moo. Got a few dozen copies left before I go to my next printing. And it was created between the three mythological points of Barsoom, the Bible, and Call the Conqueror. Those three mythological points in the universe interest you. You want to see what's in the middle? Pick it up. It won some awards. People say nice things about it. I'd love to hear what you think. If neither of those things work for you, for whatever reason, then another thing you can do is drop me a line and let me know what the show, what, what you think. Let me know what the show is inspiring in you. Let me know what's going on at your gaming table. Let me know what tools you're using. Let me know what one of these segments inspired in you. I would love to hear from you. Did you read something that I suggested on Inspiration Goat? Fantastic. Let me know. Would you do something a little differently than you said than I said I would do it? Great. I would love to hear the tools that you're using. I'd like this to be a conversation rather than just me speaking into the void. But so I'd like to hear from you. Want to hear want to hear what you have to say. And I hope to hear from you soon. I will see you next week. Hope your gaming is going well. Hope your summer is going well. Hope you're getting some sun, some swimming, some hiking, processing some vitamin D. I'll talk to you soon.